enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. See, among all other routing protocol, EHERP is something special. All other protocols have got just one parameter as metric. For example, RIP will say hop count. OSP will say bandwidth based auto cost. Or you can also set the cost manually. So cost is the metric in OSPF. If you don't set cost, OSPF will calculate the cost dynamically based on the bandwidth interface. I repeat, many people do not focus on this one point about OSPF metric. OSPF metric is cost which you and me can go and set on every port that will have more priority. But because we are not doing it, OSPF is going to calculate the cost automatically based on the bandwidth. More the bandwidth, it gives less cost. Less cost path is always the recommended, elected, preferred path. So, Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol is special because it has got more than one parameter as metric. If you take ISIS, there also you see only one, what? Cost. ISIS never worries about your bandwidth, your anything. In OSPF also cost, sorry, OSPF and ISS both are cost, but in OSPF, if you don't mention cost, cost is determined based on the bandwidth. Whereas in ISIS, if you don't mention cost, the default cost per link is 10. The default cost per link is 10 when you don't mention cost. So ISIS is not going to determine the cost based on bandwidth or any other things. It is saying, if you don't say, I'll take it as 10. If you have fast ethernet or gig ethernet or ethernet or whatever you may have, I'll take it as 10 because you did not mention. That's how ISIS works. So every protocol has got cost, sorry, some metric. One, 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 one just one parameter is metric. Only this EIGRP has got more parameters. Initially, it was having five different parameters to check to decide on the best path. Later, it has been reduced to two. Bandwidth and delay. So the metric of EIGRP is a composite metric. Composite value. It is not uh, just bandwidth no, or just a delay. It is composite of both. EIGRP metric is composite of bandwidth and delay. EIGRP is composite of bandwidth and delay. EIGRP with this two, it derives one small number. If that number is small for a path, the smallest metric path is what the best path. Anyway, we are going to deal with those things later. But what I'm saying is EIGRP is something unique because it has got two metrics, at least two metrics. Though I said, you know, it has got five metrics. 
later it has been uh, reduced to 2 and this is the protocol that will have a backup path in the topology table backup path meaning elected path one path is primary which will be in the routing table and the topology table the other path is elected to be a backup path which will be in only topology table if the primary goes down this elected backup path will become an elected primary path so that it can be placed into the routing table for forwarding i repeat again the only protocol on earth the only routing protocol on earth that has got the successor and the feasible successor in the topology table successor is what called as primary path which will be seen in routing table and also in this topology table when the primary path goes down the feasible successor will be promoted as successor so that it can also be seen in routing table now you may think like what is this OSPF also maintains a database OSPF will have all possible paths and then how did you say EIGRB is the only protocol that has got the backup path in its topology table if you are having that question that is a good question I repeat the question question is why do you say EIGRP is the only protocol on earth the routing protocol on earth that has got a backup path that has got a feasible successor when OSPF maintains the complete topology and it has got all possible paths in the database that question is the right question you are asking but again I want to tell you link state database in OSPF it is the complete topology table on which the SPF algorithm runs and picks one best path and puts that best path into the routing table if this best path goes down again the SPF algorithm need to be run on the database to pick another path again it has to run the SPF when the primary goes down to select the next uh, preferred one whereas in EIGRP right in the beginning itself it calculates and keeps it ready saying this is the primary path if this fails just take this as use and use it as primary so the readiness EIGRP in topology table it has got the primary path and the backup path which is predefined elected and it is in standby this you don't see in OSPF even though in OSPF we have all backup paths but which backup path is not determined in the initial time when the primary is alive the backup is not determined even though the topology tape, the database of OSPF has got all possible routes but we do not know what is going to be the next uh, route if this primary goes down that depends only when the primary goes down algorithm will run SPF algorithm will run and pick the next primary so there is nothing called backup path maintained in a ready state where in OSPF whereas in EIGRP whereas in EIGRP when the primary path goes down the backup path will be immediately switched 
as primary because it is readily waiting in the topology table. So we got a primary path, we got a backup path. But again, I want to warn you something. Because of this reason, we should not say EIGRP is the best protocol. No. It is OSPF the best always. Why? EIGRP may not have the backup path for all destinations all the time. Even though sometimes backup path will be available physically, but EIGRP will not agree it as a backup path. I repeat. In a short, I want to say, you know, detail I'll go later. I'll, I'll explain in a short one thing what. Because EIGRP maintains a backup path, do not advocate it as a good protocol comparing to OSPF. OSPF is the best. And ISIS is the most best routing protocol, according to me. So, according to me, ISIS is the most best, but according to the industry, when you compare to OSPF and EIGRP, industry will say OSPF is the best. Leave ISIS. If you, if you ask anyone in the industry which one is the best, OSPF or EIGRP, OSPF or EIGRP, they will say OSPF, OSPF. They are right. Even though OSPF don't have a backup path, it has got the complete topology table, which don't, uh, which is not seen in EIGRP. EIGRP will have a best path, backup path sometime, which when, whenever the backup path is convincing, whenever the backup path is satisfying the feasibility condition. Whenever the backup path is satisfying the feasibility condition, there is something called feasibility condition. For a path to be a eligible backup path, for a path to be an eligible backup path, it needs to satisfy the feasibility condition. Only then that can be a backup path. If not, even if there is a physical backup path, EHRP will not accept it as a backup path. In that case, EHRP is the worst protocol, I tell you. Even though there is a backup path, EHRP is not considering it as a backup path because it did not satisfy something called feasibility condition. That's one condition we'll talk later. So, EIGRP, when the primary path goes down, because it did not consider the backup path earlier, now it has to rerun the algorithm, dual algorithm, recalculate all the new updates that are coming, and then decides the primary path, which takes a long time compared to the time taken by OSPF. That's why I say OSPF is the fast routing protocol because I'm going, because I'm saying the only protocol on earth which maintains backup path is EIGRP, should not think that EIGRP is the best. Compared to EIGRP, OSPF is the best. Right. But this is unique, of course, this is unique. First thing I said, it has got more than one metric as a metric parameter. Second thing what I said is the backup path. If feasibility condition is met for the backup path, that is going to be there in the topology table. The elected backup path. You don't have that such elected backup path concept in any other routing protocol. Thirdly, this is the protocol on Earth that can also do load sharing over an unequal cost path. 
అన్ని ఈక్వల్ కాస్ట్ పాత సో ఎవ్రీ రౌటింగ్ ప్రోటోకాల్ విల్ డూ ఈక్వల్ కాస్ట్ లోడ్ బ్యాలెన్సింగ్ నో ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఇన్ దట్ ఈక్వల్ కాస్ట్ లోడ్ బ్యాలెన్సింగ్ గోయింగ్ వే ఆర్ వన్ గోయింగ్ వే ఆర్ టూ గోయింగ్ వే ఆర్ త్రీ for r a to go by r1 or to r3 to reach some network here in the internet let's say 1.1.1.1 let's say for simple example 100 100 100 is the cost to reach 1.1.1.1 now all three will be available in the routing table not only in eigrp except bgp in every other protocol all these three routes will be there not only three if you have one more also it will be there four is the default and if you want much more also you can you can go and tune it i want five i want six if you have equal cost path but the default is for what i am coming to say here is eigrp can even do load sharing if you got 50 80 90 this is 100 the costs are not equal but i can go and tell router a eigrp i can go by default this is not enabled again i repeat i am just trying to say eigrp is the only protocol that it can that can do load sharing even across the unequal cost path this is all unequal cost path 10 50 80 90 this is all unequal cost path unequal cost path yeah an equal cost path and this eigrp with an equal cost path by default will not load share by default if you don't do any extra tuning this is the only elected path sorry sorry that is not the one cost is high this is the only elected path 50 50 is the only elected path smaller the cost smaller the metric that's the best route isn't it metric should be always small for for getting elected to get elected now by default it will go via router 2 but if i will say router a i got a consideration what just multiply that 50 by let's say 3 and whatever the number that you get any path which is less than this you please consider i can tell that to router a i can tell this to router a that if you will find any path whose metric is less than three times or less than your wish you can say how many see why i did not say two no if i say two the answer will be 100 then this path will not be considered should be less all these three will be considered for load sharing but not this one if i want to include that one then i need to multiply by three i, I there is nothing called multiply by 2.5 no not possible 2 3 likewise so you, you have an option to tell eigrp that three times of the elected path metric you can you can consider any paths that are less than 150 use it in the routing table only only now those routes will be seen in the routing table i repeat again in order to use this paths to be a backup path sorry to be a primary path even though it is unequal 
even though it is unequal, in order to use them, it should be already there waiting as a backup path. Those path you can say, no, you don't need to be a backup path, you can come as a primary by setting this number, multiplier number. This is what we call it as variance. By setting variance, we can do that. We will talk about these things in detail in this chapter. Now, so far what I have said is EHRP is unique compared to other protocol. Number one, this protocol maintains a backup path readily waiting. Two, this path can do unequal cost load balancing. Three, this part, this part, this this protocol considers more than one parameter. In these ways, it is unique. Features of EAGRP. EAGRP is a distance vector routing protocol, but it is advanced. Why? Because this is not only just going to advertise the metric like a hop count, it's not going to advertise hop count, which you see in the distance vector to determine the distance. Here the distance is calculated based on the composite value, not just a hop count like you see in RIP. The composite value, bandwidth and delay is considered. So EAGRP is an advanced distance vector protocol. It is an advanced distance vector protocol. EAGRP is an advanced distance vector protocol. Again, it is only a distance vector protocol. That is what you need to know. There is a drawback of distance vector protocol. Link set protocol and distance vector protocol, which is better? It's always the link state routing protocol. When you are new to a country, a new location, which one you will prefer? You, will you prefer someone giving you an iPad with a map of the of the place, or you will uh, you will depend on some some roadside guys to guide you? Which one you prefer? You don't you don't really prefer roadside guys directing you to the destination where you want to go. You prefer a map, which is given to you uh, in an iPad or in a physical copy. Or you may like to have Alexa. <laughs> Alexa is nothing but a digital map. Right, so we don't really like to have someone giving you the information while you are going on the way. You stop and then you ask, sir, how can I go to the airport? And that guy says, go to the right. And it will be 20 kilometers. See, it may not be accurate. What he says may be correct, but sometimes it may not be correct also. He may be in a bad mood, hmm? but we don't have an option because we rely on mm, someone on the road to give you the route, not the map. So for you, there is no other option. Whatever he says, you will trust and you will keep going in a sometime in a right direction, sometime in a wrong direction also. 
because he might have not uh, given the correct accurate information so distance vectors are learning by rumor that is what i want to say learning by rumor learning by rumor rumor may be right may not be right also may be true may not be true also learning by rumor in rip you might have seen one router will say for that destination five hops and this router will learn five hops in the routing table so this router which is receiving the update has to believe what the neighbor says if the neighbor says correctly then okay if the neighbor is not saying correctly if it is spoofed then problem that's how distance vector protocol works even eigrp works like that you know how eigrp works i'll show you how eigrp uh, works and how RIP works. For example, this is uh, airport. And this is Mr. Arul. And this is Mr. Rahman. And this is me. Now, when I want to know uh, or want to go to airport, I don't have any information to calculate the path with a metric to airport. This guy will say, sorry, Mr. Arul will say, sir, I know how to go to airport for me from my place it is 10 kilometer he will say Mr. Rahman will say sir for me to go to airport from my place it is 8 kilometer now me knows that me to Mr. A it is three kilometer and me to Mr. R is another three kilometer. So what I do is I calculate. If I go via Mr. Arul's way, then it is 13 kilometer to airport. And if I need to go to airport via Mr. Rahman's way, then it is eight plus three which is 11 kilometer. Because 11 is smaller, me will choose pathway, Mr. Rahman. See, to decide on this, me was depending on what Mr. Rahman and Mr. Arul gives. Me did not find out the total cost by itself. me dependent on the advertised distance given by Mr. Arul and Mr. Rahman. What is advertised distance? It is the distance between my neighbor, me's neighbor, to the final destination, which is 10. What is the advertised distance via Mr. Rahman? It's the distance between me, Mr. Rahman, and the airport, which is 8. That is advertised distance. 10 and 8 is the advertised distance. So to that advertised distance, what I do is I add the metric between me and the next stop. Me and my next stop is 2. There are two next stops. One is Mr. Arul, which is 3. One is Mr. Rahman, which is also 3. So I add the advertised distance with the distance between me and my next hop. That is how I get this total distance. 
This total distance is also called as feasible distance. The smallest feasible distance path is what called as successor path. Smallest feasible distance path is what called as successor path, elected path, primary path. All right. What is the successor path's value? What is the FD of the successor path? Please answer, no, see an answer. What is the FD of the successor path? Uh, so, sorry, what is the question, please, again? What is the, what is the FD value of the successor path? FD value of successor path uh, uh, from which, uh, from which location to which location? <laughs> For me to reach uh, RA, Okay, from which to RA, the uh, feasible distance is the total distance uh, uh, that is th th 3 plus... I have written here, no? 3 plus 8, 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please right, follow right. the class, you know, that's why I asked this question. I just want to know. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry. 11. 11 is the successor value. 13 is high, so it is not a successor path, but that path may be qualified to be a backup path. How? I told you there is a condition to decide whether a path can be a backup or not. What is that condition called? I told you for a path to be a backup path, it needs to satisfy a feasibility condition. What is that condition named as? Uh, I gave the answer just now. Yeah, yeah. What is the condition? Feasibility condition. It, it should meet the feasibility yeah. It should be meeting the requirement what feasibility condition. What is feasibility condition? The advertised distance should be less than the successor value. Now, what is the advertised distance via Mr. A, uh, Mr. Arul? We, were, we are just checking whether this can be a backup path, whether me can use Mr. Arul's path as a backup path. Arul, are you there? Yes, sir. Now, I'm trying to explain you what is feasibility condition. Feasibility condition says, if a path need to become a backup path, that path's advertised distance should be less than the successor value. What is the advertised distance via Mr. Arul? Uh, three. Hello, advertised distance mean, the which comes as an advertisement. Via Mr. Arul, what is Arul advertising? Is he advertising three? It should be eight. 10. Between Mr. Arul oh, and oh, the final oh, 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 airport, it, it is 10, 10, I say. That is why you got 13 yeah. here, isn't it? Arul, are you there? Yes, yes, sir. What happened? You're not focusing then. Right? So, is 10 less than the successor value? What is the successor value, Arul? Successor value 13. Mm. That's the total FD. Successor value is the lowest FD, this one, 11. 11, okay. If this is what called as feasibility condition. Is this true or false? Is 10 less than 11? Yes. yes. Because it is true, path via Mr. Arul will be seen in the topology table. If this would have been 11 or 12, then advertised distance would have become 12, and the successor value is 11, which did not satisfy the feasibility condition. So this route will never be considered as a backup path. Even though the path is available, EHRP won't put it as a backup path. Did you understand what I said? No problem. To an extent, if yes, you understand, that is enough. 
because it is going to come later in the following chapter. The reason why I said all these things is just to say that this is not a simple distance vector protocol. This is advanced. It's an advanced distance vector protocol. Because this is also a distance vector protocol like RIP, you should not say uh, RIP and EHRP, uh, they are the same only. No, no, no. Compared to RIP, EHRP is much, much, much better. It's not simple distance vector protocol, it is an advanced distance vector protocol. Next, this protocol EAGRP is fast in convergence. How? How EAGRP is fast in convergence? Because it maintains a backup path if feasibility condition is met. So, when, when a primary path goes down, it can immediately pick the alternate path from the topology table in that way it is fast in convergence do you agree yes it's a it's a it's a very fast convergence yeah I agree yeah. right so it is fast in convergence because it maintains a backup path not only that if any link failure happens, immediately the information will be flooded so that it can find the backup path right. and use it. Yeah. Do you hear me? You know, this is a first converging protocol and there's also a classless routing protocol which supports variable and subnet mask. Uh, as a result, you will also have a very good experience when you have a discontinuous subnet. What is discontinuous subnet? When we got subnets of a network scattered in various places, mixed with some other subnets, called as discontinuous network for example you see here you got 10.1 here you got 10.2 in this area in this area 10.3 in the score instead of 10 network if you will have uh, 192 dot 168 dot 0 dot 0 uh, 1 dot 0 2.0, 3.0, these are all subnets of 192. So in the core you have 192, in the surroundings you have 10. This is what called as discontinuous network. For this you must have a class less routing protocol. Only then the routes will get distributed, if not, no. Right, so that's what here it means supports VLSM classless. Next is EAGRP send a partial update instead of complete routing table. Whenever the change happened, change happens, whenever the change happened, only the change alone is sent in an incremental way. Only the change is sent, not the complete routing table. That's what partial update. Advantage is you don't take much space. You don't take much space. Next, EHRP supports multiple network layer protocol, meaning what? Multiple network layer protocol. We have IP in network layer, isn't it? IP. Do you know any other protocol in network layer? Uh, other protocol? Yeah, any other protocol in network layer? 
uh, IP. No. Is this called Apple? Yes. We have IP, Nobel. IPv6, Apple Talk, Nobel. Uh, IPX is no. Uh, no, I, I, I never use these things, but I just heard these names. I mean, this acronym. Yeah, yeah even me. <laughs> I never seen an Apple Talk configuration. IPX, I have yeah. seen it will be like a kind of MAC address kind of thing. But uh, nowhere it is in use now. So, what I'm trying to say is EHRP can even run if you have IPX. It can even understand the Apple Talk network. It supports not only IP, IPv6, it supports even Apple Talk, IPX, and other, other network layer protocols which is not available in OSPF. OSPF is only for IP and IPv6. But who cares? <laughs> if it supports EAGI, if EAGP supports Apple Talk, who cares? No one cares. Because no one uses Apple Talk. In public, I am saying in public, no one is using Apple Talk. Who knows when someone is using Apple talk in private for security reasons, they don't want to use IP. Inside the organization, if they do Apple talk, how do I know? We will not know. There are, there, there may be, I'm not saying I'm, there are, there may be some people still using Apple talk for security reasons, because they, that's not exposed to the world much. Flexible network design. What does it mean? EAGRP, you can have many autonomous systems. This is autonomous system 10, autonomous system 20, autonomous system 30, autonomous system 40. And you may use this as a backbone area, <laughs> like OSPF. Again, I'm saying this is just you know uh, for discussion. You can use as a backbone area and you can send the summary of all this to this core, summary of all this to this core and summary of all this to this core. And this will redistribute only the summaries from autonomous system 40 to autonomous system 10, 10.3.00 and 10.2.00 slash 16 will be advertised. So by doing this, you know, you can have a big autonomous system flexible network design. Again, you have to do redistribution a lot. These things you don't need to do, you don't need to do any redistribution if you are using OSPF multi-area. But in EIGRP, you must do redistribution. If one, area, one autonomous system to go to other autonomous system, we must do redistribution which is going to be a CPU overutilization. Again, you know, when you compare to EHR, uh, EHRP with RIP, RIP version 1, if you see, it uses broadcast so to, to send the periodic update. Uh, but version 2 support uh, sends multicast that we know. Version 2 support sends it in multicast. Whereas EHRP, it always does multicast and sometimes it can even do unicast. Which is very good. Instead of broadcast, we use unicast and multicast. Which is very good. And again, summarization, you can do at any point. <laughs> Please understand. Summarization at any point means you can do global level summarization or you can do interface level summarization. For example, when I want to send the update to this direction from this router, I want to send summary. 
but in this direction i do not want to send summary i want to send detail because i have my own autonomous system so you can do summarization at any point any any point means any interface any port port level summarization you can do interface level summarization you can do it need not to be a global level summarization you can do interface level summarization port level summarization that is what we mean here manual summarization at any point next even though it is a classless routing protocol ejrp make sure there is no loop that is what i call it as feasibility condition the feasibility condition that we learned you know advertised distance should be less than successor value which we will be learning again later in detail this is the condition which the algorithm called dual diffusing diffusing update algorithm dual diffusing update algorithm is what the algorithm eigrp uses this algorithm got this condition just to make sure that loop never happens ejrp guarantee is 100% loop free classless routing and the configuration if you see the wan configuration and lan configuration of ejrp is same it is easy Yeah. And then the last point we already saw this is the protocol which can even support unequal cost load balancing. Unequal cost load sharing. Unequal cost load balancing. Any question on what we see here in this page? No, I guess all good. Uh, there is no question so far. Yeah. Right. In this page, what you see is what the details of the previous page. Neighbors are discovered using the hello packet. If neighbor goes down and comes back again, the same hello is going to recover the neighbor. Right, so neighbor discovery and recovery is via hello packets. Not only recovery and discovery, even the neighbor maintenance. Neighbor, when they keep saying hello, the neighbors are maintained. EAGRP is a protocol which works on IP. IP88 is the number given to EAGRP. IP89 is, can someone say what is IP89? It's a protocol. What protocol? IP89. A89 is OSPF. We have already covered this. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah right. Presentation. So EAGRP is 88. So, because it's an IP protocol, how do you provide reliability? See, if it's a TCP based protocol, you will have three way handshake to provide reliability. How do you provide reliability in IP? So, EHRP has got its own reliable mechanism called RTP Reliable Transport Protocol. This guarantees the 
delivery of EIG ERP packet to all neighbors. So, RTP, the word RTP is also seen in another domain. What is that? Voice. Voice domain. That is real time protocol. This is reliable transfer protocol. Reliable transfer protocol, product of EIGRP. Real time protocol is voice. So both, you know, we call RTP, but they are not same. This is EIGRP's uh, module. This is this is EIGRP's uh, This is the AGRP's um, tiny algorithm that gets enabled along with the AGRP that provides the guaranteed uh, delivery. Reliable transfer protocol, RTP. So you don't need to go do, do more research on RTP because this is inbuilt with the AGRP, comes with the AGRP. As I said earlier, dual algorithm, diffusing update algorithm is what used by EIGRP to provide a loop free, at the same time, low cost path for every destination. It is this dual algorithm that uses that feasibility condition to provide that. Next is EGRP is a PDM, what it means. For Apple Talk, there's a separate module of EGRP. For novel IPX, novel network, there's a separate module of EGRP. Likewise, for IP and IPv6, we have separate, separate module. So they are all independent of each other. We learned about, we have learned about the fundamentals, the terminologies of EAGRP, the features of EAGRP. Now, what are the tables that EAGRP got? Topology table. As I said earlier, we will have neighbor table, first neighbor table, show IP EIGRP neighbor is the command which will show all the neighbors to which the neighbor is established. When two routers send a hello packets with same autonomous system number, only then they can form neighbor. If two autonomous system, two different autonomous system hello packet comes, they don't form neighbor. The autonomous system number should be same. So uh, there is a reachability. They send the hello packets. They found neighbor. Those neighbors will be maintained in the neighbor table. Every five seconds, the hello packets are sent between the neighbor. If the hello packet don't come for 15 seconds, the neighbor will be removed from the neighbor table, neighbor list. So you will have a neighbor and the interface via which the neighbor is connected. Neighbor is nothing but an extra router with which EIGRP has established adjacency. Next one is the topology table. To understand topology table, we need to understand a lot of these things, which we will see in the next class. So in topology table, what you will have is you will have the best path and the backup path, which is also called as feasible successor for each destination. You remember I told you the advertised distance, feasible distance. Yes, that's what you will see in the topology tip. For every destination, you will have, a, you will have uh, the clear EFD and EAD values. Here, EAD is not administrative distance. Administrative distance of EIGRP is 90. 
here ad is advertised here ad is advertised distance not administered distance advertised distance is the metric given by my neighbor to me for example mr arul was giving metric as 10 rahman was giving us the metric as 8 that is what advertised to me that's an advertised distance and the total distance which is the metric between me and the ruler and the ruler to the final destination so those informations will be seen in the topology table in the routing table you will have only the best routes in the topology table you will have best route as well as the backup route the best routes are called as successor routes the backup routes are called as feasible successor route feasible successor successor this one we need to learn along with this page which i have skipped this page and uh, this page goes together we have already discussed slightly so i want to complete it now itself before going to this page i would like to share you this page and explain you see here this is the table seen in the how to see the neighbor table from here i can see that e0 is what connected to a neighbor e1 is connected to b e1 this this picture from this picture what i understand is a is connected via e0 sorry c is connected to a via e0 b is connected via e1 and now when i see there is a network called 10111 via a the advertised distance coming is 1000 which means here it is 1000 so a says i give you advertised distance it is 1000 b says my distance is 1500 so i'm advertising you to so it goes to c which means if we have d is 2000 which means here it is 1000 here also it is 1000 1k so 1000 plus 1000 is 2000 via e0 1000 plus 1500 is 2500 via e1 Now, which one is cheapest? Which one is lower? 2000. That is why you see the root via E0. Now, this is, an ad this is a feasible successor. Means this is the backup route. Why, you know? The advertised distance of the backup route is less than the successor value it has satisfied the feasibility condition isn't it that is why this is there in the topology table otherwise it would have not been here if this had is if, if it didn't satisfy any question on this page no that's all good if you know this then you will know this page very well now please go through this
Do you have any question on any of this path? Please ask me. Yes, sir, is I'm fine. See the last point? Yes. Okay. All right. Play like with the diagram, if possible, in, but maybe in the next class. Which one you want? You want this page to be explained? Uh, I think this already been discussed. Feasible distance, better than distance. It's already been done here. I think it's done here. Yeah, this already been done. Okay. EGRP has got five different types of packets. Hello packets are every five seconds sent. With this only a neighbor is discovered. With this hello packet only, the neighborship is maintained. If someone stops saying hello 15 seconds, the neighbor is going to be completely removed. So hello packets are the one which establishes neighbor. Next. Updates are sent. The route updates are sent whenever there is a change. And then queries are sent whenever there is a loss of primary path. I repeat, if the primary path goes down and if there is no feasible successor, I repeat, when there is no backup route, the only route which was available is gone. So what the router will do, it will query every other neighbor asking if they know about that destination, which is what the query. For that, someone will reply. That is a response to the query. Whenever an update is received, an acknowledgement should be sent. Whenever a query is received, an acknowledgement will be sent. Whenever an update is received, acknowledgement will be sent. That is to provide reliability. You see this picture, it shows how the neighborship is formed. They send a hello package, that's how they know each other, and then they share the updates and the acknowledgement, and that's how they learn each other. They become fully uh, synchronized. Is there any question on this page and uh, this page? No. See, EAGRP, as I told you, there are five metrics. Bandwidth, delay, reliability, load, and MTU. And the number of bits The IGRP, which is an old protocol of EIGRP, both IGRP and EIGRP use the same five metric. But the difference is EIGRP, the total number of bits, 24. The total number of bits for EIGRP is 32. That is why we multiply the IGRP metric by 256. Why 256? 24 plus 8 is what? 32. So 8 bit, 2 to the power of 8 is what? 256. Right, you will see this even in this diagram here. Look at this. There is only 24 bit used for calculating the metric of IGRP. In EIGRP, there is 32 bit, so there is an 8 bit difference. That's why we multiply 256 with IGRP metric to get EIGRP metric. It, this is not at all important slide because there is no protocol called IGRP now. It is removed. But earlier when we had IGRP, 
there was compatibility between eigrp and igrp automatically they will they will calculate this differences you no need to do anything if eigrp is in 200 if igrp is also in 200 they will easily form they will easily share the routes without any problem Now, even though you got this five metric, not all fives or five metrics are used. Only bandwidth and delay is used. See, this is not in an order. Let me write it in an order. K1 is bandwidth. K2 is reliability. K3 is delay. K4 is load k5 is mtu this is the order in which k3 and k1 is considered that is what you will see in the next page the metric is only bandwidth and delay the other metrics are not considered that is why if you see there are a lot of zeros k20 k40 k50 Means they are not considered only K1 and K3. Only K1 and K3. Bandwidth and delay. So if someone is asking what is the metric of VAGRP, you need to say it is the slowest link bandwidth plus sum of delay. What does that mean? Slowest link bandwidth bandwidth. You see here. Between A to B, there are two links. Sorry, there are two paths. And in this, there are three links, T1, T1, 64 kbps. T1 is nothing but 1,500 kbps. 1,500 kb. Now, in this path, which is the slowest link? The link between C and D. That is why it is taken as the bandwidth, slowest link bandwidth. Plus, sum of delay, you see, plus, Delay is sum of delay. 2000, 2000, 2000, how much? 6000. So with this only the composite value is calculated. Why are this path, the slowest bandwidth is 256. All, this is on the path, all the path speed is same. And plus sum of delay, oh, how many delay? 2000, 2000, 2000, 8000. See, with that, it multiplies 256 divided by 7. These things are not needed. In simple, what you need to know is EIGRP metric is bandwidth plus delay. Which bandwidth? If I have different bandwidths in the path, the slowest links bandwidth between the source and the destination plus sum of delay. Right? So that's what we see here. This chapter we saw about different packet types, uh, features, different type of tables, and then uh, what is FDE, AD, feasible successor, successor, and then uh, how the backup path is decided using the feasibility condition, and different uh, metrics of EIGRP, Difference between EIGRP and IGRP is not needed because there is no IGRP now. IGRP was one own class full protocol. IGRP is a class full old version of EIGRP. Now Cisco has removed it. By the way, Cisco product, proprietary protocol is what EIGRP is. This is another reason why EIGRP is not popular. It's a Cisco proprietary protocol. Right. So we'll stop here. Shall we continue this in the next?